All right, everybody, ding, ding, ding. We are back at it again. That's what I'm talking about. We on 10 today, full energy. We got a great vibe. This is Troy Vaughn, also known as Trey Amazing, your favorite part-time stripper, part-time megachurch pastor, but full-time dating commentator. As always, you know what it is. And today I'm joined with a very special guest uh intrepid entrepreneur someone who's making a lot of noise out there and he is making some moves as well as some headlines someone you need to follow i'm joined by the owner and founder of derek automotive we're talking none other than mr derek bailey himself how are you pretty good pretty good how are you i'm groovy man groovy thank you for joining us um you i mean you have been in the news you have you're doing some awesome things and we're in your showroom right now, uh, taking a look at your cars and the work you've done. And in terms of electric automobiles, you are the you are the person to be right now. So I'm familiar with who you are. Anybody who is who is you know paying attention should know. But for the viewers out there and subscribers, kind of give me a brief introduction of who you are and what you do. Well, my name is Derek. All right. Born in New Orleans. New Orleans, okay. Nouns. Kind of guy who's never had a job. I've had a job since I was 17. And I've been doing pretty well most of my life. Mm -hmm. Nobody's rich all the time. Um, came uh, uh, you know, upon the idea to launch a car company about three years ago uh, because we came up with some technology first that applies to the automotive electric vehicle sector. And um, you know, people ask me, like, you know, what do I want to do? What do I dream about? I don't dream. If I think of it tomorrow, I'm doing it. So, I really don't have any dreams. Except uh, I need a private jet. Okay, so I just, that's my next dream. I have to get myself a jet. That's about it. Okay, private jet. Yeah, but that's who I am in a nutshell. I'm a father of two daughters. Uh, and a guy who works all the time. Always working. Always and... Working. But what made you, why electric automobiles? You make money by fulfilling a need. Mm -hmm. Electric vehicles are needed. Electric vehicles are cool. But nobody wants them for one primary reason. You have to plug them in, and that's time consuming. And what Americans don't have more than anything is time. <clears throat> so we came up with a technology that's going to either reduce or eliminate the need to charge electric vehicles. And we think that's going to give us a pretty special place in the market. Okay. So, you and I are talking um, about this interview. I mean, you gave me, um, why well, I gave you a quick critique of the channel and what it is I do as a dating commentator. And you came up, I mean, you said something I felt was catching lightning in a bottle in terms of what I felt would be relevant and extremely applicable today. You're always working. You stay busy, and we're surrounded by the fruits of your labor, and you have created a name for yourself, and your reputation precedes you. And when you and I were talking, you mentioned how, when I told you that what I do involves dating, you know, topics related to dating, you mentioned you were too busy to date. And I felt that that was, um, you know, I didn't say I was too busy to date. I said I was too busy to date successfully. Okay, good. Thank you for the clarification. I think that, well, indeed, you know, because if you're going to date, um, you know, it, it should be healthy, should be successful. Don't want to go into anything professional or personal, uh, unprepared and not willing to, Absolutely. you know. But I love the fact that you were self-aware to where you were, you know, because of your schedule, because of your obligations, you knew that you couldn't invest what was needed into a healthy relationship and or to make a relationship healthy and I feel like that kind of self-awareness is very rare and I wish I think more people out here would benefit with that type of blunt transparency so when you said that I was like you know we got to capture that so what I think honesty and honesty with oneself can be very difficult why was it why is it so easy or what do you what makes you feel like it's, it, you know, to come of ease to just say, you know, I know me, 
to be self-aware that I'm just I can't date successfully right now. How did you come? How did you arrive at that? Well, I think for me, it's a uh, <clears throat> I'm a guy who's always on brand, right? So I have a vision of myself. I have a vision of who I am, and um, I have a vision of how I want to be perceived in the world. And um, you know, I have a saying that I've always had since I was a kid. If I can't win, then I don't want to play. Well, I play a game that you can't win. All right, so my archetype is probably the archetype of the hero, the perfectionist, something like that. I would imagine, you know, somebody had to assign an archetype to me. So if, if I can't do something well, then I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Because it ruins my brand, it uh, challenges my archetype. So it's a waste of time. So right? really, it's about me. It's really not, you know, it's really, is it anything more than that? It's how mm -hmm. we perceive ourselves. I think a lot of people maybe are not brave enough to like fully embrace their own perception of themselves. It really doesn't matter what you think of me. The only thing that matters is what I think of me. So, I mean, while I say I don't date successfully, I think if you meet anyone I have dated, would like to date me again. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's basically because transparency, honesty, trust, really the foundation of everything. So even if, if you're not going to date for a year or two years or five years and the dream is not going to come true, at least people feel like they knew what was going on the whole time. And, you know, to me, I think that to, to arrive there takes a lot of bravery. You know, just to even... Selfishness. Selfishness as well. You know, because just to be there in terms of a relationship, a sex, you know, successful relationship, uh, some people can't arrive there when it comes to you know, fidelity or monogamy or their own sexuality. See, most of all those issues derive from trying to please other people. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, well, I can't guarantee you, but my perception is I think most girls get married because they think they should get married. And so if you think you should get married, then you're out to get a guy to get married to, and maybe you shouldn't even be married. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. I've never tried to please society. If I gave anybody advice, that would be it. Don't try to please anybody except yourself. And being selfish with good intent, not mm. a bad thing. I like that. I've never actually heard that paired together, selfish with good intent. But I think it's explosive. I think it makes sense because, not, well, I mean, a lot of people, when you hear selfishness, you know, it, it comes with sometimes a negative connotation. Of you know, particularly if someone's in a relationship or married, it's like, well, how can you be, how can you expect for your marriage to be successful and healthy and promising if you are selfish? You know, how would, you know, kind of kind of break that down because I actually like the way that that's well, you, paired together. Well, you have to explain why you're being selfish mm -hmm. and the need for it. What people seek, in my opinion, beyond everything is understanding. Whether I like or dislike what you do, if I understand what you're doing, I feel safer, I feel more in control, and maybe I'm willing to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And if I don't want to deal with it, then I get to walk away. I think people hate more than anything wondering, guessing, mm -hmm. second guessing. So even people who are in successful relationships, people call it successful because maybe it lasts a long time. But I like to look at people's day-to-day -day life. I mean, when you see your mate, uh, you like jumping up and down and hate to see them walk out of the door, you know, after you've been together for eight hours. To me, that's a successful relationship. Mm -hmm. Not the fact that we've been uh, boredly dating each other for eight years or Ouch, whatever number of years. Yeah. No, I think, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm digging the way you're pairing these things. Boredly dating and selfish with intent. Um, well, if I'm being selfish with my family, but my intent is to make the family stronger, make the family mm -hmm. richer, uh, allow my wife to get that plane and take her girlfriends on a trip, then that selfishness, I mean, because there's nothing that's free. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing that's free. So, I mean, I give up a lot to do what I'm doing here. Uh, I know a lot of pretty girls who I would much rather have been on a date with last night instead of being in here 
polishing my new floors with a crew. I mean, look, see how beautiful my floors are? So They are nice. Should I have gone on a date last night, or should I have made sure that my customers walked into a showroom with shiny new floors today? No, very, well, everybody, if yeah. you if well, you have in the short to, term, it's aesthetically pleasing in here. Your girlfriend might say, well, you should have went out with me. But if the next guy walks in here, spends a million dollars, then she would have been glad that I was here last night. So, mm -hmm. you know, to me, relationships come down to a simple thing. Not to sound like George Bush, but I'm either with you or I'm against you. <laughs> That's okay. It. Those are the kind of women that I like. So, they're either with you or they're against you. So for the men and women out there watching this, the subscribers who want to try to find that energy to, to be more like you in terms of that, that awareness and that selfish intent, um, how would you, you know, if you had to talk and, and have a conversation with someone as far as helping them get there or, you know, muster up the courage to get there, what would you say to them? Be crude. Be crude? Yeah, plain and simple. Mm. I ask people simple questions. What's a win for you? See, and I'll tell you what's a win for me. And number two, tell me who you are. If you're a hooker, a whatever, a dancer, a bank robber, you tell me who you are, honestly. And I tell you I accept it. I accept it. If you tell me you're a princess and you're a hooker, I'm mad. If you tell me you're a hooker and you're a princess, I'm mad. Because now I don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. And I don't like being in relationships with people. I don't know who they really are. Because number one, if I don't know who you really are, you have to hide yourself. Mm -hmm. And if I can't tell you who I am, I have to hide myself. Which means, unless a relationship rises to a certain level, my time is absolutely better used making sure my floors are clean. Right, okay. Yeah, I mean, when it's all said and done, it's unfortunate that we are out here in the midst of a lot of relationships and marriages where people are hiding. <laughs> Where people are hold, you know, they're holding their breath, they're, you know, and and people, people will stay in these situations for years, you know, they will procreate, they will have families, they will, they'll, they'll do a lot, knowing good and well. Especially if they have respect in the community. Yeah. People will give up their whole life to be respected by neighbors mm -hmm. who are probably not thinking about them at all, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, but you have that appearance that you're accepted by your community. People will give away their whole life to be accepted by their community. Yeah, you know I mean? There wasn't always a time when I had all this. Mm -hmm. So you have to talk about the time before I had all this, when everybody thought I was crazy. Mm -hmm. When everybody thought there's no way a black guy is going to start a car company. See, those are the days. And here we are. But here we are, but uh, that's time management. Which that's is time excellent management, skill. Which is not to say that I couldn't have been in a relationship. Mm -hmm. But it would have had to have been with someone who would have allowed, who, who would have been able to tolerate that selfishness, uh, recognizing that I'm a person of good intent, mm -hmm. and um, probably would have been all right. So, in terms of, like you just said, someone who can recognize that selfishness and the intent behind it, what was some, if you were, to let's say, you know, throw your hat in the ring and go out there dating, what would be some other qualities that would be necessary for you in order to pique your interest in dating someone? Well, I love people who love me. <laughs> that's, mm. that's number one. I mean, you know, I've been married. The woman that I loved died of cancer. Mm. But, you know, when I met her, she was on a date with like a football player. So while I say I don't have time for this or I don't have time for that, the right person is compelling. So you will make time for the right person. <clears throat> but when people ask me to uh, describe my wife, or my former wife, you know, the term that I use is, I, was, I always say, that woman loved me like she loved breathing. Mm. See, that's worth time. If it's not that, okay, I, I got money to make. I like that. I'm digging that. I'm pondering that right now. I'm, yeah, I'm really... and I loved her like I loved breathing. So that went both ways. Well, breathing is important. Breathing is very important. It's, it's underrated sometimes. It's underrated because we take it for granted. Mm. I'm digging that. But if you don't take that next breath, you're not here. And, um, yeah. I mean, if somebody told me I'd live without my wife, I would have thought, 
you don't know me because it's not possible. Of course, I mean, we go on and mm -hmm. things are okay, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm digging that. Yeah. Again, I, awesome things. I think that for the people out there who are going to be watching this, um, I think they can walk away. If they took some notes, if they were paying attention, I think they can walk away um, better informed and just, I think that the information you shared, if it's applied, if people can, you know, take personal inventory, figure out why they, why, where they are, you know, for what reason, for what intent, if they're truly being honest with themselves, or if it's truly about being faithful to a, to an appearance, to the community, an appearance to society, I think that you know, you're going to have some people out there who are going to make some major moves and begin to experience life differently when they're being more honest and, like you said, more crude. Yeah, and trust in the universe is what I kind of like mean by crude. You know, I believe the universe puts people in front of you for reasons. Mm -hmm. So if you're lying about who you are, the very person that uh, was sent to help you or to inspire you or to uplift you or whatever the universe sent that person to you uh, to do in your life, uh, they think they're at the wrong address. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? They think they're at the wrong address. So. You have to give people the correct address, you know. This mm -hmm. is who I really am. So if I tell a girl, oh, don't worry, I'll be home at 5 every day, you know, I've told her a lie at the outset. So she's expecting me to be home at 5, I'm not going to be there, and she's going to be frustrated. Give people the right address, meaning you get, you let them, up, you allow them to have a choice. Yeah, and you let give them, them a choice in the Yeah, and let them know who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because if I don't know who I'm dealing with, how can I make a decision? Brother Bailey, thank you so much. This has been an epic, truly awesome interview. Everybody out there, if you are watching, make sure you hit that bell and follow this channel. Drop some comments down below. And most importantly, I'm going to need you to subscribe. Subscribe. And again, subscribe. If you're on Facebook out there, make sure you go to the search bar. Type in Ringside LLC and request to join the private Facebook community and either myself or one of my admins will admit you. Brother Bailey, before we cut out of here, and I want to again thank you for allowing me to interview you because again, this topic I think is sorely needed. But before we exit, kind of give us, let people know where they can find you, social media, website, and if you have any other events or appearances or what people should know about your car inventory. Uh, yeah, well, Derek Automotive, we're located in Atlantic Station, uh, right beside Lush Nail Bar and between Century 21. So we're an uh, automaker of new vehicles. Uh, we make electric bikes. We're in the business of retrofitting gas cars to electric. Outside of the car space, we're launching a crowdfunding portal called Inclusive Funder. Mm -hmm. That's geared towards, um, let's just say, underserved entrepreneurs, maybe entrepreneurs who really don't know how this thing is done. Uh, and we've launched our own metaverse, uh, which we think uh, it's going to present huge opportunities. Um, I mean, just globally, in, in, within our community, and just uh, business overall. So we're doing a lot of things. People are welcome to stop in and uh, visit us. Uh, on Instagram, I'm Derek W. Bailey. That's D-E-R-E-K. And on Facebook, uh, I'm Derek Bailey, and all of my brands, Derek Automotive, Electa Mobility, uh, you know, they're all on social media. All right, so I'm talking about New Orleans is definitely in the house. New Orleans in the house. Indeed, I'm digging that. Everybody, this has been Ringside Again, Corner Confessions. Oh, yeah, they can check us out at DerekAutomotive.com, D-E-R-E-K, Automotive.com. You'll find everything there. It'll you know, it'll allow you to branch out to all of our other divisions. And it is a splendid website. Uh, and if it's the right out girls there. out there, I will make time for dinner. <laughs> oh, you, you heard it here. You heard it here, everybody. Take notes. Drop some comments. Okay? You know how to get in contact with them. So if there's a love connection, uh, anything, just, just give us some credit. Or, you know, if there's any other events going down the line, a wedding or whatever, just make sure we get an invite. Um, but thank you so much, everybody. This has been Corner Confessions, Ringside, and we are out of here. Alrighty. Yeah.